Hello everyone, Facebook Live and YouTube later on and all that kind of great stuff. Uh, it's so good to have everyone here today. My name is Jonathan Brandenburg and I am I get to be the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Rancho Cucamonga in beautiful, sunny, as you can see behind me, Southern California. Even though it's a, a wee bit cool here today. I like it. It's a wee bit uh, on the on the more um, spring-ish side, uh, maybe in like high in the 60s, you know, seven. I don't know, you know, like I, I, I started to complain and then I was like, well, I should just <laughs> shut my mouth right now. All right, and to the left of me, whatever, right, you know, in, in your particular box uh, is my dear friend and brother in Christ or brother of Christ, B-O-C, the brother of Christ. Um, <laughs> Somebody taught me that, and I can't believe I just used it. Sorry. Uh, Mark Croucher. Great. Mark, give a shout out and tell everybody where you're from. Hello. Mark Croucher from the Midwest, right? Almost <laughs> in the heart of it all. I'm, I'm just Kansas from it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, it is not so sunny where I'm at right now. A little bit rainy. Very chilly, actually. Ooh. Um, in fact, I had some chilli for lunch. I can feel oh. it warming my body still. It's wonderful. Uh, oh, so thanks gosh. for the chilli. Uh, also... Uh, I come uh, as a pastor from First Lutheran Church, Pale of Kansas. Again, South Kansas City in the great state of Kansas. Nice, nice. So shout out to my Kansas roots there. I was born and raised in Kansas roots, so I love that. I love that. So uh, take the boy out of the Kansas. You can't take the Kansas out of the boy. So anyway, uh, we are going to go and tackle... Uh, Matthew 18. I know we were on this last week, and we we got almost all the way through, and we were like, we got we can't leave, we can't leave uh, the last part. And so we're gonna do some interesting things. I'm excited about it. Slightly scared, uh, pretty much the norm. Um, and so we'll see how all that that goes. So um, we're gonna start with uh, verse where where are we, man? Verse 21. Verse 21. We're gonna start with verse 21. I'm gonna read today. And then I'm going to tee it up for my brother, Mark, because he has a lot to say about this. Because he loves the connection, and rightfully so, between <laughs> <laughs> between verse 19, um, verse 19 and what's going to happen afterward. Because in verse 19, it, it basically says, whatever, uh, again, if two of you agree on earth, uh, it, wait, wait, is it? No. Whatever you bind on, and again, if two of you agree on earth about anything, it will be done for me. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. So that's verse 20. So we're actually going to pick up on that and go into this parable, this parable. But it's a little setup. Mark, are you are you going to be ready here in a little bit? I'm good. I'm ready. I'm All right. Following along. I'm going to read. I'm going to read from my old ESV. I know Mark has the NIV. If you have the KJV, RSV, NRSV, NKJV, the message for you rebels out there reading the message. Uh, I love it. Uh, follow along or, or whatever your Bible app comes up with as well. Yeah, whatever's good too. <laughs> Matthew 18, 21, and I'm going to read to the end of the chapter. So here we go. Then Peter came up and said to him, talking to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as 7 times? Jesus said to him, "Do not I do not say to you 7 times, but 70 times 7 or 77 times, however you want to translate that. Uh, therefore the the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle one, was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. Man, who does this? So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him, he began to choke him saying, pay what you owe. Sorry, got, got into it a little no, bit there. My, my old theater but it's, a great, it's a great image. It's a great <laughs> image. Know, right? so, <laughs> choke him. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. 
he refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what he had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said, You wicked servant! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should not have and should not you have mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. And so also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from his heart. This is the word of the Lord somehow. Thanks be to God. Wow. What? Mark, two or three are gathered, buddy. And go. Set us up. <laughs> two or three gathered. Okay, so we have been all about this two or three number multiple times throughout this whole conversation, right? Um, remember, it's two or more who are gathered at the very beginning of this chapter 18. The disciples are arguing over who's the greatest. That's where this whole thing is born out of. Who is the greatest? And from that, Jesus can bring in a child and talk about it. And then he moves into this lost sheep, right? There's a mini, a group, two or more sheep are gathered, 99 to be specific. One runs away. The shepherd goes after them. Then we start talking about a brother who errs against us, right? Who's done something wrong and we step towards them. Two or three pops up because after we've gone to them one-on-one, -on -one, now all of a sudden, and notice one-on-one -on -one makes two, um, whenever the two or three go with you to hear your case, if they don't just if they don't agree with you or if they still have issues, then you take it to the church and you move towards like we talked about last time, excommunication. excommunication Big yeah. deal. Big deal. But then it concludes with where two or three are gathered in my name. Now this is crazy stuff. Um, I got all kinds of notes in my little uh, book here that I just I, I gotta I gotta start unpacking some of this. Yes. Um, Jesus starts by something that we've actually heard two chapters before when he's talking about forgiving sins mm -hmm. or retaining sins. Right. So this idea of the church has the power, right, the authority from God to forgive sins. Right. People are stuck in their sin. They're, um, they're guilt-ridden. Um, people who are, are practicing bad behavior, but no one's ever really brought to their attention and they get away with it. Right. Here's the church getting to step into the world and say, hey, stop it. Knock it off. That's wrong. And you need to correct your behavior. And wherever two or three are gathered in God's name, here he is. Um, here, here is God coming in to do his work, his work of love and his work of forgiveness. Because after all, all of this, and we're going to find out more about today, is about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's all mm -hmm. about forgiving our brother, our sister in Christ, who's wronged us. Right. So right. the church, right, is counted even in this two or three, which means, again, the power and authority that God gives isn't to the greatest right. or to the least. Right. Right. It's not given to the biggest group of people. Right. This isn't democracy who gets to decide who's forgiven. It's the church. It's the gathering of the people when there's at least two, even in the midst of a conflict. God is there and he's calling for forgiveness. Right. It doesn't matter if you're a big church. It doesn't matter if you're a small church. You've been given this authority. Two or more are gathered. Fits all of that. Right. All of them. Right. And then this idea of two or three are gathered before we get into the merciful servant. Let's take it out a little different way. If the church is here, its only job is to forgive sins. That's what it is called to do. Bear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the one who came and died for us for our sin right. and now brings forgiveness through his church to the world around us. Right. Always for the edification of the believer, right. never for the destruction. Right. And of course, you had the meme to prove it. Sometimes we take Matthew 18 and we want to use it to destroy. Oh, I don't think I we have it right now. want to step into a group that makes two, and we want to win. We want to beat our brother, right. and that's never the point. Right. The church is not here to dominate, to rule over, to submit others. It's here. It's called to be this loving, gracious, forgiving entity in the world, and it brings that not on its own accord, but from Christ, because He's the one who gives the authority. He gave right. it when he talked to Peter in Matthew 16, and he repeats it again here to his disciples in Matthew chapter 18, in the middle of a story about who's the greatest, who's the least, how do we forgive our brothers in Christ, and then how do we find ourselves treating uh, with mercy those around us who've sinned. Mm. The last thing about two or three that I want to say is this. Uh, when we got to two or three are gathered, right? Um, gathered in his name. That means he's present. 
He is there in the midst of, as it says, for all time, present, guiding, leading, directing. If that's the case, and this is something that, again, I don't want to dance too close to the sun on this one, John. (laughs) In our current times, it's not only that we can view this verse in the idea of forgiveness, but it's also a reality that we can call the fact that in our homes, Jesus is present. Right. He's calling for forgiveness, mercy, and grace right. because there's two or three gathered. Mm-hmm. How, how about when we're at church? Oh, of course he is. We wouldn't argue that. The power of God is preached from the pulpit. It's spoken in the word that is read. It's in the songs and hymns we sing. Right. Of course, I can argue that. Two or three are gathered in a Bible study. Of course, we're gathered around his word. We're speaking. We're learning. We're engaging in it. A community of faith, even if it's a small group type situation where right. we're growing in one another. But John... Is he there when two of us pray? Oh, sure he is. And then comes the big one. What about when we stream, John? (laughs) I knew you were going there. I knew it. When two or three are gathered in his name, he says he's in the midst of them. There in that time and that place, God is present. Right. And he's calling the church to do its work then of mercy, forgiveness, and love. No matter where it is. Two or three are gathered, midst of our quarrels, midst of our need for forgiveness, midst of our need to give forgiveness. Right. God's there. I, this right. two or three is gathered. is It's huge for our time, but again, it's beautiful that it's born out of this whole passage. Right. Woo. Right. And we don't want, I don't want to, oh, I so want a tangent down that way. <laughs> Trust me. But I think it's, I think it was beautifully said. I say, this is one of those moments where. For my live listeners, keep going with us. But if you're listening to this afterwards, pause it. Push that little 15-second rewind thing. I don't know if you guys have it, but I have it on my phone. And listen to what Mark just said again. It is mm, not going to go. It's it's worth a listen to. The church is the church uh, where two or three are gathered. So it it. It, mm, yep, we're just going to leave it there because we need to talk about forgiveness. <laughs> uh, so, um, but it is, it's, it's powerful when it comes to not only like what the church is capable of, right? You know, I love how you said that. It's like forgiveness is a huge thing. And, and we're not talking about between you and God. There is a sort of a direct line between you and God called Jesus. There, That's forgiveness. Like somebody just asked a great question. Isn't that just between me and God? I'm like, yeah, your own forgiveness is absolute between you and God. That's that's fine. When you're talking about forgiving others, we need to gather at least two, right? Two or three. The church needs to gather to because that's its work. Its work is forgiveness. Its work is mercy. Its work is the body of Christ. And and we're seeing that being played out with how he talks to his own disciples, how he talks about the lost sheep. How he talks about the brother that sins, and then you got to go. Like, but what I want to I want to talk about more because this is it's and and I think back to C.S. Lewis's The Weight of Glory. Uh, this uh, it's a horrible book, but it's a brilliant book. You know, so it's just like ah, oh, why did I have to read this? But is now that C.S. Ch- Lewis like that, I mean, <laughs> I know, right? it's like pretty much any of his nonfiction out. is like that. You know, um, but it's. It's one of those things where now we know who we are. Now we know we're the church. There's actually, watch this bar go up. And not a bar of legalism or a right or ritual. You have to do this to be saved. No, no, you're saved. You're loved. You're already that sheep that's been brought back into the fold. That, that justification is yours. But now we're talking about sanctification. And we're talking about how does it function? How does this salvation, this grace that's internalized, become externalized? And I think that's what this parable is about. And it almost wraps up. We started with these two guys, right? It's like, I want to be the greatest. I want to be on your right hand. I want to, it's like, it's like, okay, well, well, what's before we talk about that, let's talk about how you've been chosen. By the way, you're the one sheep, by the way. (laughs) Like there is no 99. (laughs) Uh, But, and, and you're right. Notice, notice how the, the power in this, right, and I, I mean power in a positive way, power right, authority right. to forgive sins is never vested in the one. Right. It's never vested in an alone. Yes. So there's forgiveness for the individual. You're right. With Jesus, we have that relationship. We are forgiven by his work. But the power of forgiveness, right, that is born in this world is given right. to a community, right, 
to a two or three gathered together. All right, did you just bust out the office of the keys on us? Is that what a little you just bit. did? I did a little bit. <laughs> it's old school Lutheran there. And that's, but that's such a good point, Mark, that forgiveness is not in isolation. That is so good. The one who goes to do Matthew 18 on their own fails. Right. And they, they go with a, with a, with a, with a uh, self-serving mindset. Right. Exactly. You go in there with the understanding that we will gather together and we will hear God's word of forgiveness. I, that's what I think is most beautiful. I just, no. I love it. I love yeah. It. And, and I think that's what brings up the accountability. I think there's going to be like, before we jump yeah. into this parable, two feet forward, we have to be sort of ready for accountability. We have to be ready for, okay, I could be wrong. And, and, and <laughs> I don't know about you, my friends, but I have a real problem with this. I have a problem with saying, of course I'm right. There's, a, there's almost a natural default. I preached on this a few weeks ago. There's a natural default to a truth that I'm right. That my perspective on this is informed, is intelligent, well thought through, and is absolutely 100% concretely right. <laughs> and so... Um, this is Jesus challenging that. I mean, on multiple levels. And, and I'll just start it. Let me start it, Mark. The very first. So Peter comes up to him and says, I, I don't even know why this came up. There's maybe something to do with what Jesus said about forgiveness. And he's like, well, how many times? And because there is a strong rabbinical tradition that three times, three, if Mark sins against me three, more than three times, I forgive him three times for the same sin, by the way. It's, it's per sin. But for the same sin, if he sins against me three times, after that, I don't have to forgive him. Actually, after that, I can actually take out my wrath on him if I need to. I can go back to the book of Leviticus and say, look him up. Look him up. What is this? Oh, stoning. Good. I'll get him. Because it's four, four strikes. It's not three strikes and you're out. It's four strikes and you're out. Um, so in the rabbinical tradition. But Peter comes knowing that Jesus, he's not your average rabbi. He probably is up the scale. So he, poor Peter doubles it. He, but you can't say six. Six is a bad number in his world. So he goes seven. He says, seven's a holy number. So three's a good number. Seven's a good number. All right. Jesus, how many times can my brother, again, per sin, sin against me in a particular category of sin? Um, seven times? And he's just, he's just looking for the gold star. He's just like, just pin it on me. Put it on. It's like the book it, you know, things. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys remember <laughs> book it for Pizza Hut. I remember book it. I'll get me my last star so I can get my little personal pan mm -hmm. pizza that's like worth two dollars and fifty cents. But it was gold. It was gold, my friends. Anyway, so he's just looking for the gold star, and then poor <laughs> poor Peter, Peter, and then Jesus like, mm, I was thinking more like seventy. <laughs> Lot. Hey, right? It's a lot. That's a whole lot. Per category. 70, you might have, because what he did is take two numbers. And again, if you've ever studied Revelation, this the old numerology thing in a culture, it is a thing, right? And so he coupled 70 times the complete number, another complete number. And when you put two complete numbers together, the seven and the ten, that means forever. It's it's the circle, right? It's infinite. So there is no end. Mark. Really? Really? This is nuts, right? Yeah. I mean, I, think about this. We, How many times do we get into life and we're just fed up with people? Right. And we're sick and tired of their same old junk that right. they keep throwing in our way. Right. So I, I think – I'm with you. I wrestle with this too. I can I can rightfully identify with, G, or with Peter in this one. Oh, man. Um, because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like I think Peter was, looking at Jesus and going – scratching his head going, all right. All right. Mm. All right. Second mm. time you've told us directly that we ought to be about forgiveness. All right. But let's be honest. There comes a point when we're done, right? Dude, right? I mean, we don't have to put up with this anymore. Right. Because because people are people. I mean, it was like that in Peter's day. It's like that in our day. Right. There is a truth to the fact that people will trespass upon us. They will irritate us. Yep. They will cause grievances. And many times those grievances are actually the same ones. Legit and the same ones, right? Yes. Right? Yes. They're not just – it's not just like they constantly do bad things to us. It's like they're constantly doing this thing to us. And here's what's staggering, all right? So I, I'm going to use a little a little different translation. My, my NIV here says Ooh. 77. 77, um, so okay. I'll, I'll, 
But that's fine. That's fine. No, I'm just going to play it like that because it's a little bit easier number wise. I don't right. do numbers well, so I'm, I'm I have to take it and break it down simple to get this to work. But here's here's kind of what I think what, what I think is going on. Let, let, let's look at it this way. So someone is doing something that irritates you and grieves you. All right, and right. let's not go super serious, but serious enough that it touches our. Yeah, I think yeah. our, um, someone belittles you. Right, they're disrespectful in their oh. words and actions. Um, they interrupt you. They ignore you. These kinds of things. They're doing this, and they're literally they're they're belittling to you frequently. I right. think we can all identify with that at some point. Right. So Peter's saying, okay, if they do that to me one time every day for seven days for a week, one time, so I should be able to forgive them for an entire week every day when they do it. They right. do it, I say you're forgiven. The next day they do it again. I say you're forgiven. Seven days. Yep. And that makes sense, right? Yep. That's a lot. That's a totally. pretty forgiving, generous person. Totally. If every day for an entire week you do the same thing to me every day and I say you're forgiven, that's a conservative estimate. I, like you say before, here's the rules of the day. Now he's got this way of saying, see, look, look, look at me, Jesus. I'm being forgiving. See? Right. I'm right. forgiving in my willingness to forgive. <laughs> but Jesus throws out not a conservative number. <laughs> Throws out this like staggering, mind blowing. Oh my number. gosh, seriously. Let's say it's seriously. 77. Again, NIV says 77. It's going to play with that because it's easier math. That means with the same one week, seven day analogy, 11 times every day for a week, someone is belittling you. And 11 times <laughs> every day, you say you're sorry. Now, let's assume you work an eight hour day and there's yes. someone at work. You're forgiving them more. <laughs> That's Every hour time. on the hour and overtime. <laughs> and in overtime. I mean, that's how staggering this is. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus' point is. No, Peter, it's not just, yeah. oh, I forgive you. Yeah, I do. It's like a constant, complete life right. of forgiving people around you right. for the junk they keep throwing in your life and in your way. Yep. That's yep. that's the level of forgiveness yep. you are to it, you are to have. Yep. And it just blows Peter's mind. I mean, I just see Peter being like, not what I was expecting. No, no, this, no, this can't be right. This, because it, it, top it off. No. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, good. No, no. Uh, oh, so at top it off. Here's your staggering seventy-seven. Then it rolls out another one. Let me tell you a story about a staggering debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how how much how much is this, Mark? Do you have a little footnote? Everybody has a little footnote on this one. I even have. I don't even have like a cool Bible, and I think I have a footnote. I, I it, the, they say one talent. He this guy owes ten thousand, right? Is that right? Yeah, ten thousand. My little <laughs> footnote says a talent. Just one of those talents was the monetary net worth about twenty years l wages for a laborer. Ten thousand times twenty years of labor. <laughs> well, the, the NIV is what? usual yeah. simplifies it quite a bit more than maybe it needed to be. They yeah. just say. Millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I liked it. Okay, NIV, well played. Well played. NIV study. Is that the study Bible? Well played, NIV uh, study. I don't even know if it is or not. I don't think so. I, I think it's just an NIV Bible. Yeah, millions Bible. of dollars, yeah. No, oh, it's, it's true. Bible. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Well played, well played. <laughs> but it's a lot. It's a ton of money. Like, like even royalty doesn't have this kind of money. I don't even know how this guy made this debt this high. That's what I think. <laughs> What were you doing to get this debt? And who, who was giving you money? This has to have happened in the name. That's exactly. all I can say. <laughs> was your, uh, was your financier, uh, a guy named Bernie, last name Madoff? Like, I was just curious. Like, it's like, it's horrible. Like it's, it's insane, but somehow, okay, this parable, this guy gets, I could just almost see Jesus tell this over the campfire and he owed 10,000 talents. And everyone's like, that's not even a number. It's like when you hear quadrillion, you're like, that's not a number. Or, what, or was it even a little more like those Austin Power days? <laughs> One million dollars. <laughs> One million dollars? Okay, okay, fine, fine. Right. Two million dollars. Two million. Nobody. Millions, right? It was billions of dollars. Oh, billion. <laughs> billion dollars. Oh, my goodness. Okay, okay. Sorry for the Austin Power reference. But yeah, it feels not. like we weave those hashtag. together and they probably shouldn't have. I'm sorry, no, people. No, no, I'm sorry no. for that. It's that hashtag sorry, not sorry moment. All right. So, um, but anyway, yeah, it's a huge amount of money. And somehow he got it up to this way. And they did. Like, it's horrible, guys. I'm not, like, I'm not taking anything. It's horrible what this guy, um, what this guy is about to be, like, put into. But this is, 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote uh, a, a sem professor who I had a tension with, uh, but I, it was sort of a love hate, mostly on the love side, uh, by a guy named Bierman. And Dr. Bierman taught me all about oikonomia, and oikonomia was house economy or house rules, rules of the house. This was the Are rules of the house. Sorry? This parable is talking specifically about the church or the two or three gathered. And by this reference, the rules of the house. This is the master. This is servants. All that's the household. That's an important note to make. And this household works in a certain way. I'll keep lending you money. I'll keep, but there's going to be a time where the bill is going to come due. At 10,000 talents, I guess, is the, is the time. And if you can't pay it, this is how, this is how the world, this is how... He actually says how the world will take it. I will take away everything you own. And anybody and anybody who's ever had severe debt issues, which is a growing number of Americans, guys, even, even a moderate, what those phone calls are like are yeah. horrible. Can you imagine? I mean, you got, and again, some of y'all really know what this is like, and, and you get it. Magnify that by they're coming not for your car and your house. They're coming for your kids. They're coming, and they're going to turn the kids into free labor. And those kids aren't going to get paid. They're going to their, their pay is going to go back to the. I mean, it is a a crazy system, but that's the way the rules of the world, the rule of culture yeah. of the day, would work. It would be completely like, yeah, dude. I'm surprised you just don't kill him and get it over. Nope, we need it. We're going to use his body up until he pays yeah. this. And oh, by the way, there's no way to pay this. Like. And again, 20 years times 10,000. Like, the dude's not going to pay it. Even if he has 12 kids yeah. in the wing, ain't going to pay it, right? And but so, but yeah. I love his optimism. Right. I love his optimism. I mean, I love it. In my, in, my, in my Bible here, in verse 26, what I love is his optimism. The servant fell on his knees before him, his master. Be patient with me, begged, and I will pay back everything. Right. No, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> no, no you you're won't. not. It's too big. Why would you even I'll say do that? It. I'll do it. I'll find a way. But we'll say anything in that moment, won't we? Right. You're right. I mean, we've got debt in this world, and we know what that's like. Yeah. Right. But he's he's going to try. He says he's going to try. Right. No, exactly. Exactly. So, um, okay, Mark, I got a good question, and I don't want to stop our flow, but I got a really good question that came in. This is for the church. Is it, do we translate it as the church just for the church? a brother or a sister in the church who sins against me? Or do we translate this a brother and sister, period, a brother and sister in the culture, if you will, uh, sins against me? Um, is is this the, the what we're about to say extended for the church, uh, for another church member or another follower of Christ? Or is it for a church member toward anybody? Hmm. Uh, I think I'm going to dissect it and take a, a lane that somebody's going to say that's not fair. It's cheating, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to get. Um, I'm going to get in the Greek real quick. Go, go for it. Uh, I would say that this is a teaching to the church about the church, um, and it is for Christians to open up their eyes to and recognize. Um, again, I don't want to spoil too much, but to give you some good picture, we're the servant who can't pay these millions of dollars. Right. Um, and so we get that impression that we're the ones who have been forgiven. And then that translates into how we treat others with the forgiveness we give. So again, it happens within the church, yes. And it's an understanding for the Christian to Christians. But let's not be mistaken. Christians are put in the world and they look different to the world. And that's on purpose. So while I think the answer is maybe we don't necessarily hold the same expectation for a heathen, one who doesn't know Christ, to have an understanding of what's going on here, that maybe the, 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 um, the generosity of a heathen is a gift. Right? I say heathen. That's a really bad word. I don't I know where that say, came from. Busting out the heathen. I don't. So oh, for all you heathens out there, I personally apologize. I, know. You know, I so. apologize the same thing. I really do. Wow, that was... That was harsh. That was, it's the, it's the so Midwest. What's that window? It's, a, it's the Midwest. What's, what's that window that we get to see parts of ourselves from and we don't know they're there and you're like, oh no, I didn't, I'm so Whoa. sorry. Whoa. What am I doing? Yeah, uh, sorry. For the one who's outside the church, I, I think when you see in them a, you know, a, a generosity and a desire to be forgiving, I think it's worth noting like that's a kindness in humanity and a gift from God. Um, but it may not necessarily be grounded in a you know Christian understanding or teaching that we find in Scripture. 
um, from those who have given themselves to Christ, right? And right. They've, um, they've, they've turned everything, control over their world to Christ and said that they'll uh, serve him. So they serve the world with forgiveness. I, in the end here, what I'm saying is this is a lesson to the church about the church and about our failure as servants within that church and how great the master has forgiven us. Therefore, our forgiveness ought to be given to others inside and outside. And when we give it to those who are outside the church, it is a picture of just what beauty forgiveness truly is and the depths to which it can reach. Right. Um, and I think that's what brings change in this world and the church is on the forefront of. But we miss it if we either expect someone who doesn't have Jesus Christ as a mentor and the spirit as a guide to do this for us. I mean, that's no different than that's no different than uh, being in a marriage. I mean, Ephesians applies to Christians, wives and husbands, love and respect. But if you're in a marriage and your spouse is not a believer in Jesus Christ, well, then in some cases you can't expect to submit or to love and have that reciprocated the same way you're doing it. You're thinking right. one way, they're thinking another, perhaps. I, it just, you got to be careful with this Jesus stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like that was more muddled than that I was, wanted to be. Well, that was nuanced. I, it was maybe muddled, but I was more nuanced. I'm going to be a lot less nuanced. I Do just cross-reference <laughs> cross it in Matthew to the Sermon on the Mount and uh, this whole idea of loving your enemies and uh, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you are sons of your father. I, I, I take Peter's generic uh, brother as uh, a countryman, a fellow citizen, oh. a fellow, you know, but it could be translated, I think it's first and, I do think Mark is absolutely right, it's first and foremost for the church, but I think if you cross-reference other Jesus, uh, other parts of Jesus of loving your enemy and loving your neighbor as yourself, and you know all these other parts, and still in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, it kind of comes out to I think what Jesus is saying about Peter's question is the brother or sister, those around us, those around mm-hmm. us, um, because I don't want to get into the question of who's my neighbor, because I know where that leads to too. That's exactly, well, who's my neighbor, Jesus? Well, let me tell you this other parable about this uh, traveler. It's like, oh, crud, here it comes, right? <laughs> One parable for show. One I know, right? Right. Show. Sorry, sorry, yeah, right. So, but yeah, great question. Thank you, Sherry, for uh, sharing that. And again, guys, we love questions. We will stop in the middle of our rants and answer your questions. Maybe. All right, so, <laughs> it's, so it's, it's going on. It's about, to, the hammer's about to come down. He's lying on his teeth, like Mark said. I'm going to pay it back. No, you're not. No, no, no. I don't even know where all this money went, but it's not with you anymore, right? So hammer's about to come down, and then what happens? What inexplicably happens, Mark? The master takes pity on him. I mean, he sees the state he's in. He sees the way he's expressing um, his sorrow, and he says, I'll cancel the debt. Right. I'll let you go. Right. And and what? Who just did this inextricably thing in another parable in recent memory, leaving a ninety nine and doing the most unpragmatic thing the world has ever known? Right. You need to give me a week to go back. <laughs> exactly. Rewind. Go watch another one. Yeah. No. But yeah, I I absolutely see these two parables just smashing mm-hmm. together and said the same shepherd that left the ninety nine to get the one is the exact same master who cancels an outrageous debt. But we get more information now. We go from our fancy words, our Lutheran fancy words, justification about salvation. Salvation is all about grace, is all about saying how much you are loved, how much you are worthy, how much you are there. Now we're going to move into a place that we call ju- uh, sanctification, usually. And it says, now what happens when we are forgiven? What What's the what's the next day like? You know, they ride off into the sunset, the shepherd and the sheep, right? And then the next day, sun comes up, and the sheep is acting like the servant. So the servant then goes. So if we can get those, parents, servant wake up, wakes up, the, doesn't even wake up the next morning, right, Mark? He walks out the door, right? Is that how that says? Yep. So, uh, but Wait, when says he went out? Oh, man, exactly. He went out and he found. He didn't run into 
He didn't oh, like. Yes. Mark, take it. I'm mad. I just get mad every well, time. I, 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 I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I get he, so he mad at this part. He fights the guy. I mean, again, if, if you're in the moment, I'll pay it back, I'll pay it back. No, you're not. You can't pay it back. Well, let me think. If I go to and I collect up on and I get all my – I might be able to come up with something. And then you're forgiven. You're like, wow, so I'm going to have to pay it back. Right, right. But if I collect it, I, I'd have my money. And I don't have to pay it back. Now it becomes my money. I mean, clearly he's a guy who made some bad investments. Again, this is <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now he uh, he goes out and he finds uh, he finds this guy right. It, it gives that person like finds him, seeks him out, finds him, and then grabs him. I love it. Even the master wasn't this harsh, right? Oh, not he even close. Him. The most powerful man in the building didn't do this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm telling you. And that. yet he friend says, "Pay me back what you owe me." Right, fellow servant, fellow mm -hmm. friend. Okay, I'm just going to go down this. I'm just going to go down this road. So, if this is really for the church, and I think it is first and foremost for the, for the followers of Jesus, we should never have a forgiveness issue in our churches. I'm just going to say this: we should never have a moment. I'm included. I know Mark well enough. He's included in this as well. We should never have a moment of like, how dare they? And get the baseball. Where, where is Mark's baseball bat? I need Mark's baseball bat right now. Right? Yes. Bust it out. Bust it out. <laughs> and it's like, we should just, I'm, I'm sorry. It's human. You're right. And that's fine. And maybe we should have a moment. Maybe we should have an emotional moment where like, uh, 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 that's, that's hard to swallow. That hurts. It's legit, guys. But I'm telling you, at the end of the day, we all fall into this trap. We all at one time or another start choking, whether we do it mentally or actually in person berating somebody, and we just start being unforgiving. We've there is this invisible line, right? Whatever that line was, Peter's we'll call it Peter's line, because I love how Mark described it. There has to be some point, right? There has to be some point, Jesus. <clears throat> Seventy times seven. There's no point. And, and we're like, well, then you're, I can't, maybe I just don't need to follow you, right? And Jesus says, fine, let me, let me tell you a parable. And I'm telling you guys, the one sheep, when he gets back with the 99 and starts being like, well, you know, I'm kind of special. I'm a little, mm, you know, I just got forgiven. I just, he, the shepherd just went over three hills for me. What did he do for you, right? And there yes. is, right? <laughs> sort of, and, and, and we start, and then we say, don't you owe me money? <laughs> and and it's it's just amazing how quickly the people who are the should be the most tangible i like your word mark tangible about their own forgiveness sometimes goes and takes tangible unforgiveness out to the world out to their own well not even stop the world for a second out to our own people and that that's just oh man Jesus can't talk any strongly, any more strongly against such an attitude. He just can't. And it stinks, because I want I want a loophole. I want a loophole for my own justice. I was just gonna say, because you want justice. That's Heck what yeah. I was gonna say. Because I want justice. You've wronged yeah. me, clearly. Yeah. Don't Absolutely. you understand? Uh, and Jesus, don't you understand? They've they've wronged yeah, me. Right. I need, I should have the right to go back to them and tell them. <laughs> You've done me wrong, and here's what I get in return right. for it. Right. And that's what he wants. That's what he does over and over again. This un this unmerciful servant does it over and over again. It's not that I think he does it like a time, right? He just keeps going. I, oh, right. It's just it's nuts the way he goes about the business of having been shown this staggering forgiveness. Right. And yet his return back is a staggering uh, injustice. I mean, it's a staggering revenge. You know, seek for revenge or self service. I, right. It's it's just it's miserable to watch. Right. It, I mean, even what you're just like, oh no, don't do that, don't do it. And I love it's how like, Jesus made the dollar amount just big enough. It's still big. Hundred, a hundred. Uh, basically, if a day's wage is one dollar or one denarii, you know, and there's a hundred of them, it's a hundred days' wages. That's not a small amount. If you think about. A hundred days wages somebody owes you 
whatever you earn. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's almost what you almost what you owe the government every year in taxes. Right. <laughs> almost right, right? No, good. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, exactly, and it's not a small amount of money, and it's obviously been a bit of a time. So there is absolutely justice here. But who's the only person in all of this that actually brings justice to bear? The master. Master. And Jesus. here's the thing. The here's the thing, and this is the amazing. And this and Mark Mark reminded me, and I'll let him go off on it. But he reminded me before we came on. He's like, this reminds me so much of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us mm. today our daily uh, no. So I have, forgive us to our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against. And if you read the Greek, it, it's almost an equal sign. Just as we forgive those, which is a fascinating thing, and I think it's a lot of complications with that, by the way. But it but it does tie it together with. How you forgive, how you give justice out does sort of echo a sort of justice towards you from the divine, from the father. And it's fascinating because this is what this is where it ends, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let it back build to, to mark it. But this is where it ends. Jesus looks around at his disciples and he says, If you guys act like this, this is what my father in heaven is gonna do to you. He's gonna take you. He's going to throw you in jail. And I'm just like, Jesus, what? Like, you're the comforting, you're the good shepherd that came after me. No, this is the guy that he just had pity on and forgave millions and millions of dollars. And then he comes out and he sees how he's treating the mercy and the forgiveness and the love and the compassion that he was just shown, the pity that he was just shown. And he says, oh, I'll show you justice. That should ring so, that's a big bell in the church tower for the church. Well, again, it even echoes back to earlier in Matthew 18, where he says, look, I give the authority to the church that you are to forgive sins, right. or you are to retain sins. Right. And that same authority, it's not given to you as if, so it's yours now, I, I don't have it anymore. I've, I've handed that gift to you so I don't get it. Right. No, no, no. I'm the ultimate authority of that gift. Right. And right. I give it to you, which means I also administrate it over you. I, I, and so when you don't, I'm just as hard on you as you are to others. Not like in equivalent, like, if, oh, you're no. hard there, I'm going to be hard too. No, but... The, the same boundaries, the same expectations are for both. I have the ability to forgive sins. And again, that wake-up call ought to be, oh my gosh, it's not that I am without forgiveness then, because clearly the master will forgive, right. even in, in situations that are beyond understanding. But much like with the whole reason that we have this authority of forgiveness is to tell the world around us, to show in this world of darkness and selfishness and um in a in a, uh, with no desire to be generous to anybody right. at all self-serving i mean <clears throat> to look at the world and say no there, there is a place and there is a god of forgiveness his name is jesus um right. and suddenly now the church can see that we administer forgiveness and grace so that we can show the love of god and if the yeah. church were for whatever reason to withhold it it's in order to bring the servant back. So again, you don't see the end of this, but very likely you get thrown in prison and you go back and say, you were merciful once. Will you be merciful again? Right. Right. Well, it sounds like from where Jesus started, probably if you did this 11 times a day for a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, <clears throat> yeah, it's a wake up call. It's, yeah. it's a, it, it is. It's a, that's heavy. That's heavy. Jesus. Yep. I didn't think I was going to be held to that standard. Seriously. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You are church. Dude, right? Yep. And I love how you said there are times. There are times. If you guys are out there and rightfully say maybe think of horrible examples of sins, that's the time where you retain you re, you withheld forgiveness until the process has been made. And there is a difference between forgiveness and trust and forgiveness and justice. I mean, there are things that are that we could peel off and nuance and i think we you know it it'd be good to honestly we just don't have time um but there is that power right but there's also this power of of jesus to say i did not just do all of this for you so you can do whatever you want in life 
I have set you free to live mm. into freedom. The, the freedom that was just given to this servant was not lived into. He went back out and lived the, the, the way the, the world would want him to live or how he thought he wanted to live. There's not freedom here. And you can, see, you can see that in his actions. You don't get away from it. I might be above the law, but you're not above the law. You know, like there is a, 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 a giving back into a non-grace freedom space. And, and, and he's selfish and self-centered. Uh, he's just consumed the grace of the master and then thought he could just go out and do whatever yeah. whatever he wanted. <clears throat> and it's amazing. So this is uh, – we're running out of time. Actually, we're basically out of time. I know. I know. But this is where I'm going to land today in, in, in the sense of saying – it needs to resonate with the church. It needs to like sit. I'm always encouraging um, my church to try to practice on themselves. Like practice on the church. Forgiveness is hard with those outside the church. Maybe practice on the church. Just practice forgiving. What does it look like to be forgiving within the confines of the church? And then expand it out. But I'll tell you, um, in the state of California, at least right now, there needs to be a a a. a a stance or a model of this forgiveness right now of this grace extended to our brother and sister, not only in Christ, but our brother and sister as in citizens. Um, that, that is really important right now because there is, there is a dividing line happening in California. It might be happening in uh, Missouri or Kansas and other ways too, yes, where it says, I'm gonna say it's here too. we're going to go back to the church, to the building, no matter what, and that's the way it's going to happen. Why? Why? Because it's your right? It's your constitution? Well, if you want to do this as citizens, go do it. High five to you, citizen of the United States of America. If you are trying to claim a church or a biblical stance in doing that, I don't think there is one. Be I, careful. Be mm -hmm. very careful mm -hmm. on that, my friends. Forgiveness, unforgiveness can sneak up on us at any time, demanding our rights and our justice as the church can sneak up on us at any time and make us into unmerciful servants. That's what I'm going to shout out. Whew. I don't Sorry. Mean, <laughs> we just lost the, all our viewers. Like, it was like, how I dare know, you? Right, right, right. Numbers are zero. No, I think, but again, just in response to that, I love it. I love the way you said that. I mean, in my mind, I mean, you said it's one thing to be um, Christians who live in America, yeah. but it's a whole nother thing to be who Americans who are Christians. And it's the question of does the right of the gospel come first for us or does the right mm. of our Christian or I mean of our American citizenship? I mean, they're, they're both involved. Yeah, so yeah, play it absolutely. Out. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful in that. I love it. Um, you know, I guess because this sounds like we're headed final thoughts, right? I yeah, mean, that's where yeah, we are. Yeah, totally. Um, I think I just I, I would just want to go back and, and pull together um, kind of the idea that was brought up earlier. Uh, I want another shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do it. I think this is, a, like we said, like we've said now, it's a lesson for the church to hear um, just what forgiveness is and to really look at this and say, note the forgiveness that has been given to you. You're the one that was sought after. You're the brother who did wrong or the sister who did wrong. And there was a coming together of um, Christ to, to bring forgiveness to us. And it was a debt greater than we could pay on our own. Um, but when it comes to treating another human being, um, with forgiveness and love, note the staggering links mm. we as the church ought to go. Mm. We as the believers of Jesus who are led by his spirit ought to go, whether those people are part of our religious faith community or whether they are part of the world around us. Um, show this mercy, show this forgiveness, yeah. show this sacrifice. Um, don't just be conservative with it. Be staggeringly um, <laughs> Un mind blowingly gifting of it out um, because it is a picture of the moments that we are not merciful are the moments when we watch ourselves sit there and choke and find and grab, you know, someone else and treat them nothing like what we've been treated. And that is not what the church, it's not what people of God are called to do. Right. A dear, a dear Catholic priest friend of mine who's mentored me for several years now once told me we should be so busy advocating for other people's rights that we forget about our own. 
And I think that you could just replace that rights with we should be so busy forgiving others that we're not worried about the injustice being done to ourselves. And, and, and there's a balance there, guys. Do, hear me right. Hear us right. There's a balance there. And you have to nuance and parse that. But this is an important time. The world is watching. The church is actually under the microscope, under the spotlight yet again. How will it respond? You know, there might be some mismanagement. There might be some um, constitutional right infringement. There might absolutely be all this. How are you all going to respond? Oh, and they, they, are, they are predicting what we are doing, by the way. Especially us young punks, us 30-somethings, 20-somethings. Oh, they know what the church is going to do. They've already predicted it. Let's surprise them. Let's surprise them. I was going to say, the, the, the beauty of speaking the truth is it goes the truth all around. <sighs> so you can speak the truth and still be merciful. Uh, yeah. you, don't have to be, you don't have to speak truth uh, to the detriment and the pain of others. Yeah. Oh, amen to that. Amen to that. All right, that's all the time we got. Thank you so very much. Mark, are we going to come back for a remix on Thursday? Do we have do we have time? It's kind of crazy right now. I don't even know. We'll see. We'll I see. agree. <clears throat> we'll see what kind of responses we get. Let us know if we need to do a sure. remix on this. Uh, we will go on your responses. Tell us what topics we need to hit. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll let you guys know uh, tomorrow if we're going to do a remix on Thursday. But for now, have a great day. Stay safe. Stay sane. And say knowing that you are loved by God. This is World and Word signing out. See you later, all. Later.